We started off the morning very chilly today, all the way down to 20 degrees at the McGee Tyson Airport. But thanks to beautiful sunshine this afternoon, made it up to 50 which is actually about average for this time of year. Now we don't get nice average days very often this time of year, and they certainly don't last long. And just like that, we're about to move into our next chance of wintry weather. For those of you playing along at home, this is our fifth chance to see snowfall across East Tennessee, and it will pick up as we go through the morning on Friday. I think the models are overdoing this initial band in the valley probably could back this off just a little bit because the air is going to be so dry in the morning. You might actually see some returns on the radar that are not reaching the surface. A light wintry mix may be how we start things off in the valley by the mid to late morning, but that will all become snow as we go throughout the afternoon. Often on light snow showers expected through the back half of the afternoon and into the evening as well. Once the sun goes down, I think we will start to see the potential for roads to get slick across the area. The untreated roads or areas that end up under those more intense snow bands. Just like our last event, some folks in the central and the southern valley may not see snow, while others, your neighbors just a couple blocks away, may end up with accumulations on their yards. It's going to depend where exactly those snow bands end up setting up. The best chance for accumulations is definitely going to be on those northwest facing slopes in the higher elevations of the mountains. The snow gradually tapers off as we go overnight Friday night and into Saturday morning. We'll see sunshine through the day Saturday, but on the heels of the snow will come the coldest air that we've had in over a year here in East Tennessee, straight from northern Canada, right down here into the southeast. As far as snowfall accumulations go, a dusting to a half an inch or so in the valley. And again, that will depend if you end up under one of the snow bands. You could maybe even see a little bit more than a half an inch. A dusting to a full inch possible in some parts of our northern valley locations. Again, depending on the snow bands. Same idea with our plateau counties. That's where the ground, though, is a little bit colder. So I think there's a better chance of this sticking a little bit more quickly. And again, untreated roads could become slick by Friday evening. And then our eastern counties, our foothills and our mountains, have the best chance for those higher accumulations and consequently the travel issues. That's why we have a winter storm warning that has been issued for these areas shaded in pink. Those are the higher elevations. This is where travel should be avoided through the day Friday and into early Saturday. We've seen this time after time this month. Don't go into the national parks because the roads are going to either be closed or become snow covered and become very slick. The other half of the story besides the snow is the very cold air. I think that's actually going to be the higher impact across our area because whatever falls is going to stick and it's going to stay overnight sat Friday night and into Saturday morning. And that's when we're going to start to have dangerously cold temperatures. Our actual air temperatures will get down into the single digits and low teens on the plateau, mid teens in the valley. But with winds out of the north and the northwest at around 10 miles per hour, that puts wind chills down below zero for our plateau counties and right around zero for our valley counties. This is why we're encouraging everybody to plan to stay inside Friday evening overnight and through the first half of the day Saturday, not only because the roads could be slick, but because it's going to be dangerously cold outside. This is the type of cold that you need to prepare for. Bring in your pets, plan to drip your pipes, Leave your cabinet doors open so those pipes can get a little bit of that warmer air from the rest of your house. Use safe heating sources. Keep the space heaters at least three feet away from any other furniture or flammable objects. And of course, if you do choose to head outside, dress appropriately. Wear the layers, accessorize with the hats, the gloves, and scarves. The goal is going to be to cover as much skin as possible. And because it's going to be even colder in the higher elevations, wind chills could get as low as 15 below. Don't go up into the mountains on through the day on Saturday either. That's where wind chill watch is in effect. This is issued because wind chills down to 15 below zero can be dangerous to be out in even with all the proper clothing on. So again, we just want folks to be safe. Stay inside if you can and use your safe heating sources tonight. Not that cold, seasonably cool. We'll be down around freezing in the valley with the increase in clouds through the day on Friday. The light snow showers come through cloudy and cold. Yeah, we may get up to 40 degrees, but then the temperatures are going to fall through the afternoon and with the wind, it's going to feel even colder. After that very cold start to our Saturday, we may might maybe get up to 30 degrees or so, but with the wind chills it's still going to feel like the teens in the low 20s even during the afternoon. We're cold once again Saturday night into Sunday morning. Then we start our rebound and we're back up above average as we go into next week. That's when our next weather system moves in midweek next week and maybe some heavy rain possible. But let's take it one at a time. Check back for updates as we go along and stay warm this weekend.